What's up, guys? Welcome to the first ever episode 215 of the Kind of Funny Games cast. As always, I'm Tim Geddes, joined by one of the coolest dudes in video games, Greg Miller. Boo! <laughs> Boo, I say! Greg Miller's very angry today. You'll find out why in uh, just a second. And I, I'm very interested in, in why he's so upset about this specific thing. Uh, but joining us for the first time on this show? Yes, first time on this show. Boss Baby himself. Yeah! God fucking damn it. Uh, What's up? Oh, you gotta love it. This is gonna be a good one. <laughs> I'm excited for this one. A really good episode. Andrea and Fran are away because uh, they both have different stuff that they are doing. They're on assignment. They're assignments. Fun assignments. Um, but you get us today. Ladies and gentlemen, this is the Kind of Funny Games cast each and every week right here on YouTube.com slash Kind of Funny Games. We get together, talk about video games, all the things we love about them. If you want to support us on Patreon, you can watch the show live. You can get the show early. You can sometimes be a part of the show. You can get the show ad free. There's just so many options. You can also be a Patreon producer like Scott Hardinger, DJ Kanto, who I know is watching live right now, Casey Kern, Sancho West Gaming, and James Hastings. James Hastings! Thank you all for yo, making yo, yo, yo. this stuff beep, beep, happen. Beep. Uh, you can watch the show on youtube.com slash kind of funny games or roosterteeth.com when it goes up on Monday at 6 a.m. Pacific time. Or you can listen to your favorite podcast service. Just search for kind of funny games cast around the globe, around the globe, all the globes, so many globes, so many podcast services. Greg Miller. Yeah. Let's just get right into Why it. Why are you what so the mad? Fuck? I the just Walking beat. Dead final season finale. The final episode. So theoretically, unless somebody changes their mind, the end of Clement's, Clementine's story I've seen. That was how the, that, Telltale pitched it. Well, and I'm not saying that Skybound's backed off of that at all. But mm. it's, you know, it's, you know how sequels are. They got the rights back. What are they going to do with it? Who knows? Yada, yada, yada. We've been thundering towards this since The Walking Dead, the original here, right? The Telltale series. Lee and Clem doing their thing. Here we are. They're going to finally end this. They're going to land the plane. How is it going to end? You know, with this many years of stories behind them, right, that they can't end it in a way that's going to make everybody happy. I didn't expect to be angry afterwards. Okay. And so we're going to spoil the shit out of this, period, full stop. Not right now. I'm going to do. I'm going to give you a little bit of non-spoilerness before we get there. Kev, are we prepped for a spoiler bros graphic at some point? Not yet. Uh, you, for, just, yes. Can for, you be... All right, prep it up. The problem is this. The Walking Dead, and I guess this is a spoiler. I'm not going to give you specifics. The Walking Dead, the final season, episode four, the finale, ends happily. That is the problem here. And it ends in a super saccharine way, in a way that I kept waiting, like, is this a dream? Are this, is, is, is some lost is shit? AJ dreaming this right now? Okay. And we're going to have a reveal that this has all gone bad and blah, 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 blah. We don't get that ever. It just ends bogusly happy. It violates its own rules of what the universe is and what they've established as the game. Hmm. And if in this gap where I'll get to in spoilers exists where a few different things happen, then tell me that to set it up and make it make sense. Because again, I, I, there was a great tweet the other day, or not tweet, on Reddit, there was a great screen grab of a Grant Morrison tweet I'd never read before, right? Where it was basically like, yeah, I'll never understand why adults get so hung up on how Superman can fly or how Batman can run a billion dollar empire while being Batman when the answer is so obvious to children. It's not real, right? I'm not here trying to nickel and dime you for making I really like that. Right? Yeah, exactly. Yeah, yeah. I, I, you know, I leaps of logic, whatever. The Walking Dead, the video game, right? The Telltale series has done a good job of establishing here are the rules of this universe and here's how it's going to go and here's how we're going to go off of it to the point that they've done and I, don't, I they've established these rules. I don't want to tell it. I'll, I'll touch back on the rules they've established when I get their disclosure or whatever. And this just violates them in a way that like, and that, don't get me wrong. The game itself. Good. I teared up totally. I teared up. It was touching. It was, it was very emotional to go through this uh, final episode with Clem and AJ, but like we get to a point where this thing happens. Then we have another thing. All right, that's cool. Then we come back. More stuff happens. You're like, all right, cool. Like, this isn't how I'd want to leave the series, but it's not bad. This will be a good bow on it, right? And literally, they do the pan where you're like, oh, it's over, and then they pan back down, and then it's like, why? Why is any of this happening right now? So now put up spoiler bros, Kevin. All right? One sec. Now we're going to spoilers. You're watching on YouTube right now, or you're watching on the live stream of Patreon. You see the spoiler bros. You can mute it right now. We'll come back. We'll take a look it off. If you're listening in a car, I apologize. Uh, I assume you're not that big of a fan. You know what mm. I mean? You've had 24 <laughs> hours. To, not even. <laughs> you've had. You went live at 9 p.m. I'm sorry. I just have to get this off my chest. So here's. They just. It's. Let's go even further back. Let's go all the way back. Take us back. Go oh, take us. Uh, 
here's where the Walking Dead, the Telltale series, didn't lose me originally, mm. but was the first sign of, oh, here's where it's never going to be my kind of thing again. Not, not my, it's never going to be my kind of thing. Telltale in this game, and I've always talked about it, right, is they're telling you your, their story, but everybody has the same coloring book, right? So we all shade it our own different ways, and that makes us have our own thing, and it's Mine's great. So blue. Huh? Yeah, it is so blue. Tell, season one, I thought, did a great job of giving you choices, you know, that mattered to your character development and then established who you were. When we get control of Clementine in season two, we go on and we're still learning from the people around us, the two adults, right? Uh, uh, for some reason, I was trying to remember this earlier. I can't remember. I uh, remember Christine Lakin, her character, and then uh, Kenny at the end at the duel. And you have to choose between them. And on that, I thought it was a great build up from season one of Lee building Clem season two, us becoming Clem, making the choices that establish who our Clem is. And then at the end, do you side with Christine's character or do you side with Kenny? Right. And I got to a point where I was like, I side with neither of you. So I let Kenny kill Christine's character and then I killed Kenny. And I was like, wow, what a great you bastard. Thank you. What a great choice. What a great development. Well, this is so cool. This is such a great payoff. And then we get to the moment where I was like, Ooh, I don't like this at all hmm. where in season two, a baby had been born, AJ Alvin right. jr. Who will come on obviously to be the, one of the characters here at the end. After I, after both of them are dead, it's revealed that AJ is right over there. There was a whole fight about what they were going to do with him. That it was a key point. Christine's character was using to show that Kenny had gone crazy. You get AJ and then you're presented with a bunch of different options of how you want to end it. Do you want to go back this way? Do you want to go off into the wilderness? Do you want to do this? And the option I wanted was to leave AJ behind. Just leave this baby for yeah. dead. Because that is, in my head, the Clementine I had made is understanding the harsh realities of this world and is a child who can't take care of a baby. This doesn't make any sense. You know what I mean? Like, the kid's going to cry. It's going to attract walkers, yada, yada, yada. I, not to mention, I'd rather just see the baby put out of its misery. Well, who wants to bring a fucking kid into this world? I'm getting way into the semantics of my own zombie apocalypse survival. But that, instinct, those right? are the choices that they gave you to connect with that. Exactly. And that I thought we'd built up to that point where that would be a viable choice and Telltale said it was not. And mm. I did not get that choice. Right. Mm. So it was that no matter what, I'm walking off with this baby. And I was like, that kind of sucks. And I get it again. Right. I compliment The Last of Us for ending spoilers for Last of Us for ending the way it did where there is no choice. Joel is there to save Ellie. You don't get to make a choice. There are no choices in this game. We're mm. telling you a story. Telltale, even with the coloring book thing, let me make enough choices that by the end of 10 episodes, I felt like I had my Clementine, and then they took away the choice that my Clementine would have made, which is fine. Cool. I'm along for the ride. Not whatever. Like, I still love Clem and whatever. It's just this is a weird thing. So then sees our new frontier wasn't about Clem, but she was involved with it. But AJ wasn't really. He was missing. Blah, blah, blah. You're going to go get him. Great. This season has been Clem with AJ. Clem very much in the Lee role. AJ's they've all, they've all aged up. So like AJ's not a baby anymore, right? I think he's six, maybe seven, something like that. I forget. Probably should have known that. But again, here's the thing too: is that it, this whole season, it's the final season, which is exciting. They're exploring, you know, uh, more open environments of going around and doing stuff, which I think slows down the p pace of the game. They are, mm -hmm. but they're doing more action. They're doing different camera angles. They're working the the text better. Like I get all that. It's just still the thing of. Any one of these games is always going to live in the shadow of season one. Even season two, which I thought really progressed characters and did interesting stuff, paled in comparison to what season one made you feel, right? So by the time we're into this, episode four of this, and it would have been better, obviously, to play it all through in one go than break it up as you do. I'm surrounded by characters I kind of remember and I kind of don't, but I really don't give a shit about any of you, which <laughs> was like, for, was a theme for me in season two. Where yeah. it was like, cool, Scott Porter's character's cool, but I don't fucking care about any of you. I really just want to get away from you people and go about, I go off on my own, right? But And then I, Kenny comes back and you have that moment of like, oh man, it's season one again, right? And like you chase that high almost of season one, both you as a player and Clementine as a character. And like you realize it's not the same, which is cool. These are cool story moments. Whereas this one, you don't really get it. So ep the final episode here. Uh, again, really interesting in some of the stuff they do, really interesting in some of the fight mechanics, really uh, good action scenes and stuff, cool choices of how you're going to talk to AJ or do whatever. But a, a, at a, a giant battle on the bridge, right, this character, Minnie Minerva or whatever, pops up, and she's she had gone to the other side. She had been a bad person. She's a kid, too. They're, they're, we were at, like, a uh, not orphanage, a school, a boarding school for, like, kids or whatever, bad kids. So, like, we're, it's, like, kind of like Lord is of the Flies. She, is she, like, Shadow Clem? <laughs> I mean, not really. She went mm. off to the. She went over to the other side, got abducted or through this Marlin. It doesn't matter. Gotcha. 
she's bad, right? And cool. so, like, I've been very much like, fuck her. She's not your real sister anymore. She's just like, you know, blah, blah, She got bit. She did all stuff. So she brought a bunch of walkers at us. We got this giant thing, blah, 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 blah. She swings an axe and catches Clem's uh, leg mm. and goes from, like, uh, bottom of the knee all the way down to the ankle uh-huh. and leaves a giant old gash there, tears up Clem's boot. So Clem's now can't run, right? She's limping or whatever. And so... We're going. We're trying to get AJ out. It's all very tense. There's walkers everywhere. We we kill her. We have to kill her brother. All this different stuff. Um, but we're going. We all right. Cool. We get separated from uh, this other girl from school who has a romantic relationship with my Clem. Might might not be with yours. Uh, we get separated. You go that way. I'm gonna get AJ. We'll meet you back at school. Great. Get AJ up the rocks. I get him protected. And then as I'm pulling myself up, Walker gets me, bites me. And it's that moment of. Did Clem really get bit here? Did she not get bit? What do we know? Because she's already got a fucked up leg, right? And so she, you, it's a cool moment of you as the as the player peel back the split boot on one side and don't see anything. You pull back the other one and there's bite marks down at the bottom. Oh man! And I have an axe, so I'm like, fucking, let's go, AJ. Take my fucking leg off. That option doesn't come. We're not. We never present with that. Mm. We go to a bar, We you know hobble back over to a barn. Uh, you know, a lot of falling, a lot of getting up. We we. It's a really cool barn scene where. It is full on you becoming Lee, AJ becoming Clem, where you're there and you're telling you know AJ what to do, and now you're controlling AJ and you're you know barricading doors and shutting barn things, and it's very tense. And then it'll switch back to Clem, and she shoots her a few times, and it's great. But clearly, she's bleeding out. She's losing all the color in her face. She's going dead, if not zombie. You know what I mean? And so again, we have that conversation of a goodbye, like we did with uh, uh, Lee, Lee and Clem, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. and you know adding you know more to it obviously is that i i do think i shouldn't say aj seems younger than clem did in the maybe not, that's not true whatever they're they're comparable maybe aj is a little bit older he's seen way more shit than clem has he's done way more shit the kid's a cold-blooded killer again th- based on the choices because he and also he's been raised in this world where, sure and yeah. the choices i've been doing like yeah. you know what i mean like it is there are a lot of like arguments with people and i think i talked about this with episode three right that there mm-hmm. was a dude that actually ties into the comic books right and one of the the skinwalker dudes the uh the whispers what do they call them whispers whispers uh they didn't sound right for some reason anyways uh and like he was like very much like no no you know zombies aren't that bad and like walkers aren't that bad like you know and i'm like no but he's doing it he's doing it he did a good job of selling it but i was still like no so he hates us and he hates that you know aj's a killer and yada 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 um i've made him a cold-blooded killer and so it is like, all right, cool. You got to take me out. You know what we've talked about? You've got to kill me. And uh, he doesn't have any bullets. He only has the ax. And so it's like, you got to kill me, right? That's what we've talked about. And here's what I thought when this happened. I was like, this is going to be my major complaint with this episode, which did not turn out to be true. Interesting. But he hesitates on the kill, right? And he asks one final time, like, I don't want to do this. Like, can and he makes a call back to episode one. He's like, I just want to sit next to you and just I just uh, want to like sit next I know and he's like I know it'll happen I will ju- will be just like the couple on the train yeah. station like let me stay here and sure enough the options popped up and there were all various versions of no so I, I went with triangle silence hoping against hope maybe I would get something there and instead no she just shakes her head no and he's like I know I just had to ask and it was like what a brilliant move that would have been, I think, for my Clem, my AJ. And I know it would fuck up their entire story, but give me you you've done branching openings before. If this is the really the end, give me a branching ending. Right. Um I thought that would have been the coolest way. Cause it, it goes back to my shit in episode two, uh, or uh, season two, of not being able to make the choice I want, but also just being at my core beliefs of like, what are we fighting for? Like, no, you're I'm not gonna unleash you, six year old boy, all alone into the world now to go fucking do this. Like, let's just Yes, you let's know, let's just fucking shit. Let's just kill each other. Yeah. Let's just end it here together. Uh, can't do it. So he pulls up the axe and he hesitates like Clem did with the gun and, and then swings it down and then black. We then get a flashback of how Clem went to get him as a toddler after the events of season uh, three. But we didn't get to see. There's like, you know, the time jump and everything. Doesn't matter. It was cool. It was unexpected to play as Clem. I was like, is this a dream? Oh, no, it's not a dream. I'm saving AJ. Got it. Got him, got to see a little bit of him being a really young kid and having to grow up in this world and give him the rules that we've been reciting forever that have been like drilled in his brain, but like our development. Cool scene. Come back. Now we're AJ on the banks of this thing, fishing like we already did in episode one, or maybe it was episode two. Uh, spear fishing. Marlon's dog's there. Okay, great. Uh, you know, we're getting ready to go. And then Clem's hat had gotten lost in the very beginning of the episode. It came tumbling down the creek. And you can see, like, you're AJ, and you're, like, trying to get the hat, trying to get it back. And eventually, you get it back with the help of the dog. It's like, yay. So we start walking back towards the school, right? And then 
as you're going, you see other, the other kids that survived. They're working out in front of the school and stuff. And then it starts playing. And I guess as, as it started, it starts playing uh, Take Us Back, the song that ended, if you remember. It, it was, it, at the moment, very powerful. Uh, ended season one after after episode five. Take yeah, us yeah. back, oh, take us back, oh, take. And it's beautiful. Like, it's beautiful in autumn. And it's like, the game, I think, takes over here. And he's walking on his own. So I'm just getting to watch this scene happen. And he's seeing the other kids. And they're like, oh, you know, and they're like, they've already been back for a while. They're all doing their things. The one of the couples is united. They walk in. This other guy comes over. He's been he's putting up a sign of don't fuck with us. And like with a dead adult there, like, hey, we'll fucking kill you people. You know what I mean? And he, they all start going in and we're just following AJ walking and we get to the door and AJ looks over his shoulder at you. I just got chills doing it at you and then whistles and it's the dog and the dog walks in the door with him and he closes the door. Right. And it pans over the school thing. And I was like. <sighs> all right oh, yeah. this is where we're gonna leave it this is i again like a uh, cool they're doing their thing it's kind of it's the same cycle whatever yeah. but okay it's I like can, the ending they wanted to tell or whatever exactly i can live with that yeah. pans up and then guess what we're in a pan back into the school and i'm like okay now what's what's happening now so we're on the other side of the wall and i'm walking around and uh jj's talking and sure as shit fucking clementine comes over on crutches with no leg cut off at the knee and I'm like, go fuck yourself. Go. And I understand. Let's have a. Ha and this is where I'm like, is this a dream? And this is where I get my hopes actually kind of go up too. where I'm like, are we about to cut back to the barn and have it be? I just want to sit here. Is that OK? And he'll be like, OK. And that you guys just in that. That's like this vision he had of like, or they told each other they're talking. Nope. Clemens, Clemens just alive. So either I'm to believe that again, I remember I remember being. Not this mad, but on the bridge of it in episode or season one when Lee got bit, right? And then long in gameplay wise, a long time later, it was like, well, we, let's cut off the arm. And I was like, oh my God, what a hokey out. No, it's been too long. And we cut off the, I cut off my Lee's arm. And I'm like, I'll take the shot. Didn't work. And I was like, that's fucking awesome. There's no way out. You know what I mean? Great, great. That's rad. Clem. Now, not as much time passed, a lot of time still passed where this was not at, this isn't a Herschel situation. If you remember from the yeah, comics yeah, yeah, where yeah. it was literally like belt now ha hatchet, gah, gah. like it was not that at all, which gets even more preposterous. Then if we're going to go back to the barn that we are barricaded on all sides, AJ's covered himself in the guts because he was going to have to get out on his own before he kills Clem, right? We're surrounded and AJ did this. So there's one there's uh, there's three possible outcomes here aj went up with the axe came down and cut off clem's leg there with no tourniquet no supplies this woman he couldn't carry before now with one leg helped get out of there before she bled <laughs> out surrounded by walkers sounds like bullshit to me is it uh, an empty barn though where there's supplies in the barn you don't know no the, I've, I've been through this barn sir <laughs> the next option is that he brought it down he's like i can't do this let's get you back and she's like okay so even more times passed for the leg thing the third option, the kids all, they so they ran in there and they saved them and like they figured all they like show me or tell no one says anything about that. There's no like it's literally Clem's like, you know, you say you didn't listen to me and if it wasn't for you, I would have been dead. And like, you know, that's why I trust you to make your own decisions, which was a, a cool moment in this game where it is like AJ is like. He's off, right? He's in. A, he's a kid raised in the zombie apocalypse, so he is much more black and white. Than, and so, like, you would have these interesting, really throughout the season, really interesting conversations with him of like when killing and lying is okay and when it's not, and blah blah. And so, like, the choice in this episode was like, you either tell him that you trust him in the hard situations, or he needs to grow up still. And so, I, I was like, well, I, I trust him, whatever, right? And there was a moment where he raised his gun, is like, what do you? Oh, he did the right thing, or at least the thing I would have done. And there's options there. There were of like good job you had, did, you had to do or like that wasn't right or we'll talk about it you know what I mean yeah. like, but he did what I wanted him to do the kid I was raising him to do so we have this conversation with Clem of yeah that's just all like oh man happy go lucky we sure did pull this out yada yada and they have like a nice food scene where they're all sitting there eating their uh, food together you know you get to have a conversation with Clem where she's like you know and I just didn't know what I was doing like you know did I do a good job raising you you know and he's like are you kidding and you get to choose what you say and I'm like of course you did you know what I mean and like you can tell how genuinely happy Clem is and this is one of those this like what I was talking about a couple weeks ago with Cassandra right of like I don't know this guy but clearly this makes you happy and I like you enough in this weird thing that I want to make you happy that way too character so I'm happy that Clem's happy that she, you know, getting that reinforcement that she did a good thing. And then she's like in charge of the group and she's giving out orders and shit. And then they have the thing and it's all fucking happy and bright. And it's just like, 
what the fuck? Like, it's not even like, and I'm not even like, this needs to end badly for everybody. There's no, I don't expect a Walking Dead TV show to end happily or anything, or the comic books to end happily. But like, the leg thing is just like, it's such a cop out. The whole ending is such a cop out mm. to where like, it would have been so much better if when they panned over school credits and we were done, yeah. than to go in there and get this saccharine sweet, everything's okay. It leads to an awesome ending, uh, like scene scene of, after that's all done, right? You as AJ, you get control of AJ walking through the school and it's literally you walk in and as you're walking down the long hallway of the school, it's like, you know, it's projecting like white text over there. Like, you know, tell the walking dead, the final season, right? And the floor says the still not bitten team and the walls are lined with the signatures of the mm. de developers put in there, right? Cause there's like kid graffiti all over yeah, it that, you know, yeah. but like this is clearly breaking that fourth wall and you turn there skybound and then you walk into your bedroom and Clem's bedroom and you can put down a few more trinkets and then eventually you put the hat down on the desk mm. and it'll be like, are you, you're done? Or are you still more to do? And like you're done, and you put it down, and he says something, and then like walks out with the dog, and then it just does like a little thing, uh, still of like you know the wind coming in and sunlight in the hat there, and it's like thanks for playing, all that that whole thing I just did beautiful, really well done. It's just literally this pan up of the school into the school, and then till then where I'm just like, why, why is any of this done? And I have no knowledge whatsoever of this. I know I, we worked with Telltale in the showcase. Obviously, we know the voice actor, stuff like that. I do not know thing one. Part of me, the cyni cynicism or whatever, is like, did Skybound make them put this in there? Like, for to hey, mm. guess what? Clem is still alive and there could be more adventures. But you know what I mean? Like, I don't know if that's true. Maybe this has been the vision all the way. Maybe I'll talk to Gary Wood and see what they pitched in the writer's room or whatever. But it's just like, why? Like, why? Like, to either don't don't do the leg thing at all or and don't pass the torch and let's let me end it as Clem. But like, what, why? Dude, th this, <laughs> is the, this is the problem with zombie stories always is they can't end. Yeah. It's like, and that's why it's always better in the beginning. It's like, it hits a point though, where you're just like, there really is two endings. Either they find a cure and it's okay. Or it's, it's never going to be okay. Yeah, this is, yeah. this is life now. And it's just like, because at some point or else the third option is just, it's a never ending cycle of all oh, the rebuilding humanity yep. and like humanity. Now it's, now it's no longer a zombie story. Now it's just human starting. Again, right. Right. And it's like, I feel like the problem with this, it reminds me a lot uh, of death note. And I'm not going to spoil things for that, but there was a moment in death note that happens pretty far into it that can really be seen as the definitive end of the series. And a yeah. lot of people I think would be more happy where it's like, that happened? Cool. I get this. But instead, they they have another set of episodes that just keeps going. And it, I like to look at it kind of just like an alternate ending. Mm -hmm. to sure. Like when you're on a DVD and you're just like, all right, how else could it have ended? And it's just kind of like more like, not fan fiction, but it's just like, if, if you want more content, there's more content. I feel like this is kind of like that where it's like the pan, it's like, that's the end. And then the rest is just kind of like the, now here's the other stuff for the and people it, that are going to be mad about And so to be clear, I'm very, I'm not, I'm mad, right? And I'm not like, I want to fuck, or fuck the devs or anything like that. It's just like, I don't understand this choice, what you were thinking, blah, blah, blah. Again, game was season. The season was a lot of fun. The season mm. was interesting. It was, I, I do think now that we've done it and this is the final season and this it theoretically is the end, this is very much one of the things of like what you're talking about where it's like, man, it would have been cool if we never came back from season one. And I don't mean that in a shitty way. I don't mean to say that like all the work that happened and all the moments we had and all the adventures we had weren't worthwhile, but it was, we just spun our tires forever. And so even if it would have ended with AJ going in, I would have been right what you're talking about, right? Like there's no way to end this in a way that I'm not like, you're not going to cure it. So it is like, cool, AJ's on his own. That's why personally, as dark as it sounds, I would have much rather had it, he, he sits down next to her and they, they, they just end in a place of love, right? Like, cause I want, you know, for me with Clem, right? I'm getting choked up. There was a moment when we're walking towards the barn and she's all fucked up hobbling with the thing, right? Where the options come up of saying something because he looked back and he looked sad and, and it's like, I pick, I love you, right? Like I need, let's get it out. Like that was always the thing with Lee, right? Like I didn't, you never felt you had those moments because like he was being guarded until it was too late kind of thing. Mm -hmm. And so get that out, like say what you need to say and get there and just be like, let's have the real conversation that we haven't seen expressed in a Walking Dead book or a Walking Dead piece of fiction from, and I, I should say, Let's stick to the books. I don't. I haven't kept up on Fear the Walking Dead, and I I haven't kept up on the, the last two seasons of Walking Dead. We haven't seen the main character in the story be like, you know what? Yeah, let's. I've played all the cards I can play. I don't want to send you out there alone, even though apparently you can carry a, a teenage child, possibly bleeding from her leg through this mom. You know what I mean? And I went to. I was like, am I crazy? Like, because you know, 
I'm not the best at. Um, it was all a dream. Wink. Like, did I miss something? Did I miss like the the top was wobbling? Climbing. You know yeah, what I mean? Yeah, yeah. So I went to the Reddit. Like, look, and every the subreddit, and people are like, "Oh no, I really liked it." And blah, blah blah. And I'm happy. It was. It ended happy rather than. And I'm like. Wait, they broke their own rule and somebody in there was like, oh, well, you know, the, the bite wasn't that deep. And it's like, okay, true. But again, she had none of the color in her face and couldn't move. She was back to where Lee was. And maybe that was just blood loss. Okay. How the fuck did they get her out of it? How did, how, uh, they, uh, walkers from everywhere. They yeah. were surrounded by walkers. He killed them all with the axe. Glenn got out from the dumpster. Oh, don't, that's a great thing. Yeah, that's a good fucking, <laughs> that's a great point of bullshit too. You're right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, but like, man, man and it, okay, so again, I... I'm coming in hot. Like this mm -hmm. literally just happened 30, 40 minutes ago, right? Yeah, While you guys are finished. Yeah. So it's like, I'm very raw with it right now. I'm not trying to take away from the fact that it's a cool season. I think if you like to walk in, you should play it. But it is still that same thing of we never hit the highs ever again in this series from season one, episode five. And the problem with that is this is a story based okay. game. Spoiler there's no, no, there's no gameplay. Like the gameplay is not the star of the show. It's yeah. story. It's making choices. And it's, yeah. it's all of that. And everything I said earlier about zombie stories, it's like it hits a point where it's like, shit, what are we going to do? It reminds me of like Game of Thrones where it gets far enough along where things aren't surprising anymore because you expect them. And we now are going into the final season. I highly doubt that the final season has any chance of being the best season. I'm not no. saying it's not going to be good. I expect it to be good. But we have so few characters left where you're just like, there is no possible thing that they can pull off that's a good story that someone hasn't thought of. Already. And the last season's basically turning into a zombie story uh, as well. And then that's true too. Yep. But the point I'm making is like you hit a point where you're too in on the understanding of the world for them to get you. And I feel like that's the problem with this where it's like cool, season one ended the way it did. From then on, it's, it is spinning its wheels because you're always trying to be smarter than the, the story. You yeah. know, it's like you always are trying to guess what's happening and see what the twist is going to be or like not twist, but like what the emotional moments are going to be. And that's hard when, okay, someone died. So is the twist now that they're, they don't die because that's not as emotional, yeah. you know? And it's like, that's, it's just hard. I, I just, don't know. I mean, I just go back to that scene with him. That should have been the final choice in the game. Can I stay with you or not? And you know, no, you have to kill me or you, you can. And like, then the final thing is just, you know, a fucking pull out of the house they were in and it's either AJ coming out covered in guts like hobbling through the zombies off into the distance or a pan out and nobody leaves the house you know yeah. what I mean and like if finally the walls break down and go in that way and that would have been a period on the story whereas again like I this like Clem is still out there doing the same things and she's what mini Rick Grimes now like leading her oh band God. of children out there yes this reminds me of the TV show currently oh yes. no very I, I I thought I thought <laughs> although season nine I heard a lot of good things it's it's kind of getting back I haven't watched all of them I've seen uh, two episodes of it now and I'm like did you see the most recent one I I, I just watched the end part I yeah I was gonna say that's the one that blew up the internet where everyone's like you see it and I had to go check it out. I was like that's pretty good that's yeah, good stuff they did yeah. a good job with that but yeah I I felt like when they were like at the onset of this when like it's the final season I was like oh here we go you know all bets are off anything can happen blah 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 and it's it plays like a normal season of The Walking Dead which sucks because when I say that I just mean it's some stuff happens characters you don't really care that much about except for Clem and AJ to that point which to their credit again somebody who wanted to abandon AJ <laughs> in season two they made like, you care yeah by the end I was like you know what I feel for the kid I understand I, I was proud of like at the end I tweeted it when they put up my choices that I yeah, gave him what he learned yeah I was yeah. like that's cool and I I do like that I I built this kid in a way that when I was like, I trust you, he did the things I wanted him to do without telling him to do it. If that makes sense. You yeah. Know what I mean? mm. So yeah. Cool. Fun. Enjoy. It's, it's, it's just this last thing of like, man, this is the last note I get with these characters. This mm. is the last note. Fuck. Here's a question for you. If people have never played the walking dead games yeah. before, would you recommend them playing past the first season or no. just stop there? I would not recommend you play it past first season. Wow. Here's my thing. And I, cause I've talked about how much I like those, these games, right? They're not bad games. If you want more of that, keep going. It's just the fact that I really do feel that. And I don't know. It could be. It, it's maybe it was because The Walking Dead season one was so fucking good and came from a place when everybody's like, what? Telltale. Oof, they're not good at games. Narrative games like this weren't a thing. There was no Life is Strange yet. You know what I mean? Like maybe that's why that resonates so much with me. But I feel like. Every one of those characters in season one is so fleshed out, right? Where I'm like, I'm struggling to remember people's names from a game I just played, right? Because they're so disposable. Whereas like when, even in this, when the, uh, 
uh, Clem pushes herself back up and the door pops back out. I was like, oh, this looks a lot like the Carly Ben scene, right? Like I remember their names from season one. I remember Larry. I remember Lily. I remember the way story beats. Now granted, I played that game a ton for review, but I also played that game a ton because it was awesome. Mm. Walking Dead uh, final season here, right? For the first time, or not, I shouldn't say that for the first time in the main game tosses in like uh, hey here's collectible trophies and shit like that that mm. I missed like I missed a collectible I'm not replaying this game I'm not going to replay this wow. like I don't there's too much other amazing things to do like that's how this all is you know I always say that there's really not time for a game that isn't amazing like seasons two three four you know Michonne all that stuff it's all stuff to do and it's all fun and there's choices and yada 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 but like I, I, if some, I, I, you know, plow through them because, of course, I don't like watching TV. Like, this is more fun to do than TV, I feel, and that kind of stuff. But I would never be like, dude, you got to play season two. You Thanks, got to you. play season three, right? Like, yeah. fuck at regular yeah. Alvin. Fuck Alvin's wife. Uh, what was uh, the guy from Quentin Tarantino's movies that was on the show up at noon with me? Talks like that. Michael Madsen. Michael Madsen has a great mm. performance in season two, but it's short. Mm, Kumail's in season two for like an episode. Like, there's like neat little things in there. Where it's like, all right, cool. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. New Frontier, whatever. Don't even bother. Those guys, whatever. Who the fuck cares about Somebody it? Fuck cares. Only season I own. <laughs> really? Someone gifted it to oh, me. Sure, I was yeah. like, ah, do you want those? I was like, uh, it's maybe. like, it's totally one of those things. Like, I would recommend to anyone they play season one of The Walking Dead. Mm-hmm. Beyond that, you have to be like, I really want more of this kind of ga- this kind this kind of gameplay. Not this game. You're not going to get more of that, right? I think there's a touching moment in season two of Clem, like I always talk about, right? Telling, uh, if you want to, Scott Porter's character about. Uh, Lee, which really resonated with me, which I loved because I loved Lee so much and I loved Clem so much, and that was great to retell that. And I liked the Cl- Kenny reunion and stuff like that. Hey, season two is pretty good, I guess. But like, it's, <laughs> but there's like, I mean, again, that's five episodes, that's ten hours of gameplay, and I'm really yeah. hung up on like three or four moments where I'm like, that was a really cool moment. Yeah, mm. good stuff. Well, and yeah. I know it doesn't sound like a ring endorsement, though. but like, yeah. I don't think I think when you you're that high, it was either walk off, it's a walk off grand slam, and we never do another one. Or we do a bunch and they'll never hit that again. There's just impossible. Yeah. yeah. Uh, next up, I want to talk about Control. Andy! Andy! Uh, Greg Miller got to play Control along with Andy Cortez. Uh, Control is coming out. It has a release date now? August yeah. something? Or yeah, it's August something. That it got leaked and then it got confirmed and then uh-huh. it's whatever. Yeah, we Andy and I. What's up, Andy? You got, is this mic hey, on? Greg. Number one game journalist, mic on, Kev? How you doing? Were you adjusting the fan? What are you doing over there? I turned on the fan. Yeah, it's really oh, hot in here. Fan, yeah. Really, really hot. I'm, I'm fired up though about this Walking Dead stuff. So I've heard you. I mean, do you want to talk about it all again? <laughs> no, it's no, no. You can just listen to the show. You can watch okay, it on YouTube. Cool. Andy, what did you think of Control from Remedy? Uh, man, it is my shit, dude. Yeah, right. This game. Um, I think that the closest parallel, and it's gonna be, you're gonna hear it all the time, is like this is sort of like the inception of games, where Ooh. it's very visually stunning. It's got an awesome aesthetic like everything about this game you walk into a new room and either the interiors are really cool and modern looking or a room is just like bright yellow yeah. or there's just like really awesome flashes of color uh that sort of lead your eye if you um, don't know anything about control let me give everybody a boilerplate description yeah, do, from wikipedia i got there late Oh, sure. Yeah. Yeah. Control is an upcoming action adventure video game developed by Remedy Entertainment. Of course, these are the people behind Max Payne, uh, Quantum Break, Alan Wake, and published by 505 Games. The game revolves around the Federal Bureau of Control, FBC, a secret U.S. government agency tasked with containing and studying supernatural phenomenon. As Jesse Faden, the Bureau's newest director, players explore the oldest house, the FBC's paranormal New York headquarters, and utilize powerful abilities in order to defeat a deadly enemy known only as the Hiss. It's coming out August 27th, 2019. Um, yeah, Andy got there late. Stupid fucking GDC traffic, am I right? Oh my god. Well, also, that being the fucking driver, it's like, look, I know that there's like traffic, but still, like, you don't have to go 25 miles an hour. There's like <laughs> enough room to drive. Yeah. So, yeah, uh, this was our first time playing Control. We've seen mm-hmm. Control before, obviously. Right. There's plenty of stuff up there. And it was our first time getting on the sticks, as the kids say. Cool. Um, everything Andy just said is spot on. Like, I, like when, uh, I'm, I've always been a Remedy fan. Loved Max Payne back in the day. Uh, Alan Wake, I enjoyed, but it, I wasn't even that much into 360, but I played Alan Wake here and there. And then uh, Quantum Break, I really dug, right? And so to see them bring, I think, dropped more of the live action-y stuff, obviously, from Quantum Break, right. bring it more into a, we're going to tell you the sci-fi story, and it's all it's all in this weird area, right, where when you hear the description, and this is what they were talking about, too, you hear the FBC, right? And you're like, oh, so... We it's like Ghostbusters. We all know ghosts exist, and it's like they're like, no, it's not that. It's like it's very much that we know this is happening, 
in terms of the government. They've put this special thing together that nobody else knows about. And even though they know about it, they don't understand it. So mm. it is very much that you're this group working on this thing, but you don't really fucking know what's So happening. like early stages of all of this popping up. Yeah. Well, I don't know that I don't, yeah, for them. It is for our knowledge of what the hiss is gotcha. and all these extra dimensions. And what I think the game does really well from what we saw and what we played, right. Is giving you the sense of scale that this is so much bigger than you. Mm. Cause yeah, the oldest house as Andy was saying, very sterile concrete, straight lines and they were talking about this This is all based on you know this design aesthetic right but it's also the way brutalism yeah brutalism what they call it the way they do it and place you as jesse in there right like you're you know at the in the middle of the screen obviously but it feels like there's four fifths of the screen still around you and above you where it's just like i'm not filling the frame like and then when you take off and you fly because you can fly or you can uh levitate using the control abilities or whatever and go around it's very much like there's a lot of space here and it's not empty you know there's a lot of space here but it's there with a purpose and it's mm. there to make me feel small and it's a way to make me you know engage enemies differently the game looks awesome i remember the first trailer being like this looks really cool like we just looked at the gameplay a second ago and it's just like i love the the look of it the graphics seem great i worry about the feel of the game i didn't love uh the the quantum quantum, quantum, break. quantum break. break yeah i was like quantum break, quantum break. um just because it felt off to me like it reminded me of when you were playing crackdown three of just mm. like how the, the the character moves and stuff, like, they glided a bit. Yeah, it's like very glidy and it doesn't seem tight. Does this feel tight? This didn't feel as tight as I'd hoped. Um, now, I would granted, say yeah, it's still got a glide to yeah, it. Yeah, we mm. we we were seeing a lot of slowdown with a lot of physics particles. Where I mean, there's everything in this sort of world is not breakable, but it sure as hell seems like it. Where you're behind cover mm. in front of a pillar, Lo- lots of it is breakable. Yeah, yeah. not so, everything, but lots of it. And, and you're you're picking up debris off the ground to use to guard in front of you and throw at enemies. Interesting. And you're taking tables and throwing them at people. And um, I feel in that. I, oh, go ahead. I was going to say I'm on the opposite of you, Greg. Where I did not really like Adam Alan Wake. Alan Wake. Yeah, yeah, right around the flash. Um, and uh, Quantum Break just didn't do it for me either. Yeah. Where I, I feel like I like Quantum Break a little bit more than Alan Wake, but Quantum Break I really wanted to love, and it, I kind of was bummed out that I just wasn't feeling it. Gotcha. That sucks. Yeah. Uh, to the breakable stuff, though, of like using it for a shield and throwing like that, that is another one of... And I, I think this is Jesse, obviously, getting these abilities as the game goes and stuff. It doesn't, what we're feeling is like gunplay and running and stuff like that. I felt not glidey, but yeah, I knew what you mean. Like, it's not tight. It's not like, yeah. boom, I'm yeah. snapping shooting. And the same thing with throwing stuff where if I didn't feel precise with. Now, granted, we were dropped into a demo along yeah. the way into a sandbox thing where we had all sorts of mechanics added to it. But it didn't, it wasn't. It didn't push me away from the game. It didn't make me not want to play it. Same. It's just like, oh, this is how it's going to feel. Yeah, yeah see, that's just like yesterday when we watched the State of Play, right? Yeah. And we saw Days Gone and there was the gameplay. Immediately, I was like, that looks like it feels good. Dope. Yeah. You gotcha. know? And I look at this, I'm like, that doesn't look like it feels good. Yeah. Hmm. Yeah. And I can't argue that. Maybe it's a brief amount of time. Days Gone, I spent hours with, right? Whereas this, we what we played, you and me, between for like 15, 30 minutes. Yeah. Or it, it, it had a little bit of a delay in it to where it felt like we were playing. Not on game mode and not w- with HDR on, mm. because whenever you have HDR on, that it's that takes lag. away input lag, yeah, um, or that adds input lag yeah. rather, and so it, it didn't feel as tight as I'd hoped. Uh, but everything in terms of like the aesthetic, the vibe that you're getting from this sort of weird agency that totally doesn't exist in the real world, but it, I got a lot of Bioshock vibes as well. When sure. you're running around in the world, you're seeing these displays. Um, on the screen where like it's a live action feed of a doctor telling you like now we're running these experiments and we, we got to be careful because like, he's kind of like recording logs for himself or whatever a lot of the technology in the world is very 90s looking yeah even though it takes place in modern day um there's just a lot of w- it's just so it's fucking weird it looks like a, it's Everything it's my like, kind of weird it reminds me of like kojima which is some one reason why i can't wait for that stranding where everybody says yeah but what is it it's like i don't give a shit it looks weird and i'm into it like and, yeah. there's a lot of those vibes here <clears throat> and leaving mm. we were talking about the gameplay right and, and, and i this sounds like a cop because i thought it was enjoyable it's a lot to wrap your head around i don't and I, you know i will see how it feels for me it's such a backseat to what the, the kind of weird science fiction story they're trying to tell like i'm interested to know what the hiss are and why they're invading obviously i think it's already fun enough to play yeah like where i'd be like all right I'm ready to jump into it. Will it be that satisfying gameplay you want to be a part of? I don't know. I really dug the game, the gun she has. She has a service mm-hmm. oh, revolver, so right? Cool. That's the director's. So I guess like she gets installed the director and gets the gun, right? 
And so that's the only weapon you have through the game. Because rather than pick up other weapons and then have those abilities, you pick up different. Ver you pick up like uh, the gun can augment and like change in your hand, like do whatever. Mm. So there's different like settings for the gun. Mm. So you have like uh, what is it four or something like that of uh, the different things the gun can do. Yeah, whether one it's of like them a quick shoots, fire shoots like an Uzi. One of them you charge up the shot and then yeah. let go and it. But uh, they were talking about how the controls in this game are very much like hold and release based, where you're you're holding up the shields and you let it go to throw it, yeah. throw the debris at people. You're picking up an item and holding R1, and then you're letting it go to throw at somebody. Hmm. Um, also, uh, getting back to the aesthetics, it does this really great thing of whenever you open... Whenever you enter a new world, similar to what Gal Guardians of the Galaxy 2 did, where the big font oh. pops on the screen, pop, it just it looks gorgeous. And they're using that font, the control font that they're using, which is Corey Schmidt's, like one of the best graphic designers ever. It just Tell like me, yeah. pops into the world, and it's just huge, and it's like the master's room or whatever the fuck. Yeah, and yeah. It, it just like uh, everything about this game, the UI is so minimal. When you're in the world, there's just like a tiny little icon on the top right. Again, he, I really think it's speaking to the scale of it. Right? Yeah, or, yeah, yeah, and it makes you. Yeah, the I love the FOV uh, in the game because you, it does like what Greg was mentioning earlier. The whole like this room probably feels like it's maybe five stories tall, but there's no stairs. You're just kind of in this giant. They make, you, they make you feel small. Yeah, yeah. it's really awesome. Uh, they, then on top of that, so then for the weapon, the different kinds of weapons you're unlocking, right, for the thing, then there's weapon mods for those. Those you can do anytime, right? And then you have abilities that you can then augment and switch out to for your yeah. character uh, at control points. It's cool. I can't yeah. wait. It, it's just, it's that perfect sort of blend of weird and stylish. And uh, I, I think Nibel uh, on Twitter was posting screenshots from the trailer that they released this morning yeah mm. and it's like it, it reminds you of like one perfect shot or like every fr every frame yeah. of painting or whatever where huh. like the interiors are just so like, the cinematography everything is that done they show. so purpose uh, purposely in yeah. this game it's gorgeous yeah the cinematography that they've shown in uh trailers like gets me hooked in yeah um yeah, I had the same like uh, reservations uh, as you from E3, where I was like seeing the controls and the gameplay. I was like, I don't know how this feels, but it's in the name. they're gonna yeah. have to do yeah. a lot of optimization because we like when I talk about slowdown, it was a huge amount of noticeable slowdown. Are y'all allowed to say what you were playing on? It was it was a, it was a dev kit. It was a dev kit. Yeah. Yeah. It wasn't gotcha. even a debug or anything wow. like that. Okay. It was a full blown thing. So I mean, it's August twenty seventh that it's coming out. I mean, they got time obviously. Yeah, yeah. On it, yeah. and I I had assumed that we'll see. A little bit of a downgrade in visuals, and because we we're kind of used to that these days, where yeah. when you're trying to run the game, it there's so many moving parts and so many yeah. variables floating around you. Yeah, and, and what whenever, you were saying earlier, like there's HDR game mode now too. Yeah, for most TVs. I mean, yeah. like my TV has HDR game mode, and it it doesn't affect the lag compared to normal game mode. It I guess it just definitely didn't feel as tight as I was hoping, but gotcha. I, I'm still like 100 percent, and regardless of you know, if it has a great story with interesting characters and an awesome setting and the gameplay is like 85% there, I'm still yeah. in. Like, yeah. yeah. That's cool. Same thing. Cool. Anyway, can't wait. All right. Well, thank you very much, Andy. Bye, Andy. We love you. Bye. Bye. Now, Barrett. What's up? One of the main reasons I wanted to have you on the show. Yo, what's up, Tim? It's Cuphead. Yeah. Whoa. Whoa. Let's go. Oh, fucking more, Cuphead. more about it. On Coming Switch. to Switch, yep. um, April 17th. Mm -hmm. uh, you and I both got to play it. Yes. And it was one of those things. I had it first, and I, was, I talked about it last week on the show. Yep. Um, I was like a little around halfway, mm -hmm. and I was like, I'm just going to keep going. And I, I didn't plan on beating it, because I was just <laughs> like, I don't know that I'm, I can. And I, I challenged myself. I was like, I want to play this entire game on the Switch with the Joy-Cons, like yeah. handheld version, to see if... Uh, how that feels, and I've now beat the game. Woo! And again, two time. Um, I was two time first. I, though, I just want to say it hit a point with the with the switch, like playing that way. That I was just like, oh, this actually totally works, and is a great yep. way to play it. Yeah, there's something about being that intimately like with it because this type of game, it's a lot of people look at it and they compare it to Mega Man. It this game is Not nothing like really Mega Man. Yeah. It's more similar to a bunch of contra boss fights, right? Okay, mixed with. Uh, like R type or mm -hmm. uh, Ikaruga, like a uh, uh, standard shmup, right? Right. Where it's just bullet hell. Yeah. Um, and that's Absolutely. all that it is. It's bullet hell mixed with Contra. Yeah. And um, there's just something about being so close to the the characters and and to the action going on that that felt good. And I was worried that the buttons weren't going to hold up. It was totally fine. Yeah. The, the, uh, Cuphead was the first game that I played, even when it originally came out, that I like understood like 
uh, holding a controller like in claw, claw mode. hand. Yeah, um, and they totally uh, like let you optimize the game however you want because you can switch like controls or whatever. And they do still you have switch. Uh, no, I do not. You don't. No. So oh, I, I so I was doing the claw mode of having. I think it's why that is. Oh gosh. Why is dash? Why is dash? Uh, and then B is the bottom button, right? God, I'm totally like just use the PlayStation on. thing. PlayStation, so it's tri- yeah, it's triangle. Yeah, so this is always interesting to me. You as a Nintendo fanboy also have trouble with this. Nintendo's Maybe. stupid though because their A is in the wrong place. Okay, okay, so right. Well, that's the thing. And like when I was trying to play whatever, when I was into one of my Switch games, really mm-hmm. hardcore, I had it figured out for a while then because it's it's the opposite of how it should be, right? So it's B A. X, y, no, Y, X, right? No, no, no. B- so y, a, y, is on, y is on top. So it's Y, X. Nintendo's X, buttons y, function a, the way PlayStations do in Japan. Where gotcha. the right button is the, like, yes. Yeah, mm-hmm. yeah, yeah, And it's like, that never made sense to me, because when you look at the Nintendo controllers, whether it's handheld or console throughout the years, it's like, the original Nintendo, they're next to each other, B and A, and, but then event, like, it starts <laughs> they start to do angling the, like, in this weird, weird yeah. way. I hate it. Uh, so, yeah. Man. But, but, but anyway, the other thing so, is, I feel like PlayStation is the best way to explain it, because that's the only one that's unique. Where it's like you can't yeah. just be oh it's where A is because that's yeah depending sure. on you the know where Square changes. is you know yeah. where that's a great point too it's just the opposite of the Xbox which yeah. I also I, Xbox I know like that X PlayStation <laughs> I like that Nintendo I've never been able to memorize well so dash I have the top button uh, I believe jump is the bottom button mm-hmm. and then you've got shooting as the left button yeah. and so yeah I keep that format for some reason it like it helps me figure things out uh, but yeah you can totally change it where triggers you can use the biggest shooting. change I do is I yeah. change shoot to be the trigger because then uh, you can kind of just hold it down yeah. and that allows you to uh, I did not know that freedom. you could hold down the shoot button until halfway of my first playthrough I was like pr- I was like frantically <laughs> pressing yeah and then just so everyone knows, Barrett is the best person I know at this game. He is so good at it. I'm so did, pacifist, man, I'm easy. did pacifist pacifist mode. Yeah. All that stuff. Yeah, You're fucking I, I, crazy. I had to do pacifist mode for IGN to get a uh, uh, gameplay of the black and white mode. Um, and I did that when there was no guy like it came out and then that weekend everybody was trying to figure out like how do we unlock this mode? How do we, do we unlock this mode? So there's no guide. I had to figure out myself and I still don't remember how I got through that. Thanks, Pam. Um, yeah. God damn it, Perry. <laughs> uh, no, I think that was probably a Dustin call. Um, Fucking Dustin. Even worse. <laughs> and so, yeah, play. It, got to start playing it again. I think I started on Friday, and I was so addicted. So so many people over the weekend, because they know that I was interested in uh, Sekiro, they're like, ah, you playing Sekiro? Are you playing this? Are you playing Division 2 more this weekend? Woo! No, I was just addicted to Cuphead. Dude, that was my entire God, weekend. Now, it's so funny, though, good. because before this... Uh, you, we would been talking about Cuphead a lot. I right. was talking to you about my playthrough, and I was mm-hmm. like halfway through when they announced Cuphead was coming to Switch. You got it on Steam. Well, no, so they they it was before they announced it on Switch. I was just in the mood. It was like three. It must have been like two or three weeks ago at this point, and uh, I was just in the mood to play Cuphead. So I went to the Microsoft Store, bought Cuphead. It was like. F- 10 bucks or whatever and I was like hell yeah I'm gonna play some Cuphead and you got pretty far in it I did, I got all the way to the the train boss which is basically the last boss that you have before you go to hell and then I did not complete that playthrough and then you got the switch and, <laughs> and then, then this, I did it this all Monday, over again <laughs> I came in and he was just like I beat it I'm like you motherfucker and all of a sudden I was like I can't let Barrett Dude, I need to beat this fucking game. But now game. I'm very close to beating it three times. So, because I still got the triple I, crown winner. Yeah, the, yeah. Right, well, I'm, I'm okay with two. I don't need to. <laughs> the different There's console else experience. Proof. I'm like, I'm, I'm down for this. Yeah. Um, but man, I had such a great time replaying this again. Yeah. And like, I felt like I had such a better understanding because once you know the patterns of the bosses, it's like, right. you just are, you, you just kind of relearning. Real, yeah. The real game is. Yeah. And playing it on Switch, I'm noticing my grades are a lot better. Yep. Still not as good as yours. Uh, but we're getting there. Getting and, there. And, and I was proud of you. You got uh, A minus on King Dice. On King Dice, yeah. who is the bane of my existence. Um, <laughs> I hate him. A lot so of people much. gave shit to King Dice uh, when the game first came out. And I really enjoy that boss fight. I do agree this with you. This is the you. random one that you kept getting fucked down? Yeah. Fuck that. Yeah. Oh, yeah. I was so Bullshit. into it. Because you like kind of learn, like, I found like the true path of, like, okay, the easiest path to do is uh, boss two, boss four, and boss seven. And you just have to be very precise on the dice roll. And I was very into it. I don't know I, why. Yeah, but I love King that. Dice yourself. I am now a master at it because I've done it so many times. Sure. But yeah, you are. I, I still stand by it being a huge criticism of mine for this game mm. where I feel like every boss fight is so beautifully balanced and like nothing ever takes too long to do. Yeah. So when you die having to redo, it's not bad with the exception of King, King Dice. Dice. And yeah. before that, there's I was telling you, there's this robot boss fight um, in the, the junkyard 
where every boss fight has multiple phases. Like standards three, some have like four, four or, five. or five. Yeah. Um, but once you get to the third phase of this this robot, it lasts forever. And it's like you're in it for so long. And I feel like it was a bad development call because mm -hmm. I felt like there should have been a fourth phase of then changing up the gameplay. Because yeah. you're doing this bullet hell section for half the boss fight. And it just seems very unbalanced. And like, unlike the rest of the game, which I think every single decision was perfect. Yeah. Like, the the aesthetic of the game matches the gameplay so well through everything, the dialogue, oh, yeah. the writing, the everything. It just feels so purposeful that that to me felt like a blemish so late in the game. Yeah, that was that was a boss fight I remember first time playing through being very frustrated with because it felt like the difficulty because I was enjoying the difficulty, but that one seemed like a weird like random spike and it wasn't even like I would have appreciated if was the uh, last boss fight before hell, but it's not. Yeah, you know, you can get to that one pretty early on in uh, Island three. So it felt like kind of random of like, why the fuck is this so hard? Yeah, um, but, but King I think dice yeah. though. Um, now that I'm a fucking pro at it, I will say it's still a criticism of mine because yeah. the problem with it is that boss fight, the entire thing from starting to, to finishing it, takes you about six and a half minutes, which is wow. three times as long. How long does it take you? Oh, yeah, bad boy, bad <laughs> How long take you? I, think it, I think I'm like five and a half. St still, doesn't matter. Like, yeah. own embarrassment. I love yeah, it. I love dude. it. But no, still, like five and a half minutes is still almost three times as long as the other boss. Yeah, fights. like the average boss fight uh, to get like the gold, um, like kind of score on a boss fight time, you need to beat it under two minutes. And even I remember playing King Dice this time around. I was around five and a half. Um, it might be. Somewhere around five and a half, and I still got like a gold tier. Like mm -hmm. they had purposely made. I mean, I got six the, and a half, and I got gold tier. Interesting. Yeah. yeah. So huh. sounds like they're Bitches. giving out gold tiers. Yeah. 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 Uh, but the the problem with that though is that when you lose and have to redo six and a half minutes over and over and over, that, that's that, not that, fun. Like that's that frustrating because yeah. it gets to the point where a lot of the, like pretty much it's a gauntlet match where there's just a shit ton of bosses, new bosses. It's not like Mega Man where it's like oh you face everyone you did before. It's like there are six. Nine. Uh, there's no, nine. there's nine of them. There's yeah. nine new boss fights introduced in this one level, and they're all kind of mini bosses. To be fair, you don't have to do all nine. Yeah, um, if you're lucky with the damn dice rolls. Yeah, but, the boss baby. Yeah, there you go. There you fucking. There's go. still two I, I haven't faced because I still have question marks next to them. Oh yeah, yeah. I faced them all so many damn times. <laughs> man. Uh, but it's just that that to me I think was kind of a bummer because it's like it's it's not fun anymore, and the, these games should be challenging and frustrating uh, to a point. Yeah, but. Not frustrating to a point where it's like, this isn't challenging, it's just frustrating. Mm, um, mm. And then after that's the devil, who's the final boss. Oh, man. I love. I forgot how hard the devil was. Beat him. Second try. Wow. Yeah. It took me a good two hours, because I remember Alyssa was watching like some movie, or maybe she was watching uh, um, Waiting for the Punchline. So it, was, it probably took me about an hour and a half or so, but yeah. I'm impressed. There's nothing I'm more impressed, satisfying, man. though. Like After that hour and a half and having the boss beat, you're like, yeah. I could do that again. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, I, I remember when they, they announced Cuphead for Switch, and I, I was very concerned about, like, is this going to be harder on Switch because the buttons are so fucking tiny and all this stuff? But it feels great on the Joy-Cons, yeah. man. Really I'm very fun. impressed. Are you planning on uh, going further in the game, like trying to... Uh, so, yeah, like, are are we allowed to talk about any of the, like, systems in the game on the Switch, or do we need to avoid, yeah, avoid yeah, that? Yeah, we do that. Okay, yeah, yeah, yeah. so, yeah, like, the achievement system in the in the game um, got there's me a little... Yeah, so there's achievements in the game. There's achievements that are coming later for Xbox, uh, Xbox Live, mm -hmm. but the same achievements are already in the game. Built into the actual game, so right? Twenty different ones, and they and they pop, and so it, you still get that gratifying, like, oh yeah, I did something. So there was a time after I beat the devil where I like went to, I was like, man, I only need to like collect four more coins to buy all of the stuff from the store, and uh, so you get like two achievements there, and I I'm guessing there's probably an achievement for doing the pacifist mode on all of the run gun levels. So I'm thinking about doing that. Um, so I think the achievement system is definitely going to keep me around for a little longer. Um, but yeah, we'll see. I, I remember you saying that you were a little, um, that the loading times were, were something that you noticed. I didn't notice it as much. I mm. remember, like, I remember noticing it because I was playing on PC. So yeah, PC was naturally faster. But from what I remember, the first time around playing this, I was playing on an Xbox One S, and it was, and it might have just been because it was an S. I don't think the loading times were actually that much different from a. They definitely are. Game Explain put up a video. Oh yeah, it's ridiculous. But for really? me, it's not, it wasn't so much the loading time that bothered me mm. as much as the stuttering animation. See, I always had the stuttering animation. Every, it's every loading screen. 
I had that when it first launched on Xbox. Oh, though. really? Yeah, I remember That's it being weird. a huge problem of like the little guy like kind of freezing up and yeah. stuff. Yeah, I remember What's that. Wrong I was, little guy? Come I know. On. I, yeah. and he's so adorable. He's like, like this little clock dude, and I, I wanted him to be happy, but he yeah, wasn't. He, he was, was frozen. So slow and frozen. Yeah, I remember it was that. Like he was in Mission Impossible too. It was insane. God, <laughs> so much slow mo. So much Shout slow out to mo. Cuphead. Uh, yes. It's another. It's another proving ground that everything belongs on the Switch. Yes, that is absolutely true. I, I want to keep playing. I want to go back. I want to try to get it. I've is never that, gotten any of the filters. Is so. it your Kansas City game on the plane? Oh, yeah. yeah. Oh, yeah. And I'm still, I'm still, guys. I haven't been talking about in this show because I'm like. These fucking spirits? These goddamn spirits, dude. You <laughs> gotta Smash stop. Brothers. No, no one else is I'm playing so it anymore. close. I'm so Completed division. close to getting all of them. I have less than 100 to go. Oh, wow. All right. That's so 1,300. Close. Yeah, no, that's impressive. Uh, less than a fucking 100. I've beat Classic Mode. Like, don't you tell me. Don't 65 you say, oh, there times. It is, there it is. Don't say that. 65 times, guys. It's a lot. I only have four characters to go. God I'm getting. Man. I'm doing it all on all right. uh, Kansas City. Bro. I respect wow. it. Uh, yeah. But yeah, I uh, I unlocked the. I think it's like the two line visual mode. I forget what they call it, but it kind of gives like a more orange and uh, grayer tint to everything. And I think you to unlock that, you have to get at least 15 uh, A's. A's. Uh, so I feel yeah, like I, I can manage that. Island one, once you go back, is pretty manageable. Once you get the weapons, you can just fuck these motherfuckers. The back. the one that I had the most difficulty with uh, with giving getting an A score was the uh, the flower. Um, that's at the end of uh, oh. Island one. That one always fucks me up for some reason. Mm. And so yeah, I got all A's on Island one, which was exciting. Then uh, I got A's on the King Dice and the Devil, and so I, I felt I felt good about that. Yeah, yeah. I B plus the Devil. Damn it. A minus you King Dice, though. Kev, are you planning to give this one another shot? It's on Twitch, dude. Yeah, dude, I'm, I'm totally planning to play it again. Hell yeah, you are. Do you think you're going to beat it? Uh, I doubt it, but like <laughs> being on the Switch makes it so much easier, and like I'm definitely going to get further. I don't think I ever got off the first little island thing. Mm. How many uh, times do you think we hear Kevin swear in the background on these shows? If he actually jumps in it a lot. Yeah. yeah. Oh yeah. my god. That for that weekend where I had to unlock uh black and white mode, where like I took the Xbox home with me to unlock it so I could get gameplay on Monday. I felt so bad for everybody. Like Andy and our roommate uh, other roommate at the time and Alyssa, like I was yelling so fucking much that weekend. Yeah. So I apologize. What a, a year game. and a half late. So <laughs> or two years so later, great. I guess. Um let's move on. Before we do that, I, I want to say this episode. On. Is brought to you by these sponsors. This episode's brought to you by Quip. One of the most important things we do for our health every day is brush our teeth, yet most of us don't do it properly. It's your oral health, and with a Quip electric toothbrush, sticking to good habits is simple. Sensitive sonic vibrations for an effective clean that's gentle, gentle on your sensitive gums. There's a built-in two-minute timer, so every 30 seconds it pulses, telling you to change what quadrant in your mouth uh, you're brushing. And like I've been telling you guys a thousand times now, I was definitely not brushing my teeth for as long as I was supposed to. Um, the two minutes, it, the, having the timer makes it a lot easier. I'm definitely doing things right now and it feels great. Uh, there's a multi-use cover that works as a stand. It mounts to mirrors and slides over your bristles to pack and protect your quip on the go. It's very sleek looking. I love it. Every time I look, I walk into the bathroom, look at my shower. I'm like, man, my setup is looking nice now because I have that limited edition black on black quip and it looks Fantastic. Feels fantastic. Tim, too. you sold me on the black on black. I got my black on black right yeah. now. Yeah, dude. Oh, Vera Courtney joining the squad. Uh, Nick and Gia have been using theirs and love how easy and reliable it all is. I have too. And soon, Bear will be as well. Oh, Greg Miller too. I think we're like an almost entirely Quip household here. It's fantastic. That's why we love Quip and why over 1 million happy, healthy mouths do too. Quip starts at just $25. And if you go to getquip.com slash KF, Right now, you can get your first refill pack for free. That's your first refill pack free at getquip.com slash KF. Also, shout out to Upstart. Applying for a loan is a lot like applying for a job that you don't get to interview for. Instead, loan companies make their decisions based off your credit score and history without getting to know the whole you. Now, thanks to Upstart.com, it never has to be that way again. Upstart is revolutionizing the way you borrow money by rewarding you for your job experience and education in the form of a smarter interest rate. 
Upstart is a great option if you're trying to get your business off the ground. Uh, kind of funny would have definitely benefited uh, early on in the game if we if we use a system like this because uh, we could have had the studio a lot sooner. It would have helped out a lot. Uh, unlike traditional credit underwriting, which could be biased against people with a short credit history, Upstart goes beyond the traditional Vico score while assessing your credit worthiness. Ups okay. FICO store score upstart believes you're more than just your credit score they make it fast simple and easy to check your rate in less than two minutes without affecting your credit score the best part once your loan is approved the funds will be transferred to you the very next business day the next day 24 hours it's great uh see why upstart is ranked number one in their category with over 300 businesses on trustpilot and hurry to upstart.com slash kind of funny to find out how long your upstart rate how low your upstart rate is checking your rate only takes two minutes and won't affect your credit. That's upstart.com slash kind of funny. Thank you for that sponsors really quick. I just want to give a quick shout out to a game. I don't think anybody's talked about on the show trials rising oh. Oh. shout out to trials rising. Um, I, I dropped off for a bit because naturally division two, we got to say DC kids, um, almost at level 30. I haven't gone back. I've gotcha. had a oh, busy really? weekend. I, and I had the giants game to go to last night. Yeah. I'm trying to get back either today or tomorrow, but yeah, I was really addicted for, uh, to trials rising for a good two weeks game. Super fun. Uh, I think it's on sale on switch right now. And a lot of people are like, Oh, I heard like bad things on switch. I've only played it on switch. And there's some pop in problems, but that's not what the game's about. That game is like the most like, PS2 era, like Tony Hawk type of era type of Score game. Score challenge. Yeah, and it's so that's what, fun, Yeah, it's, it's you on uh, like BMX bikes, right? Yeah, and it's it, it's kind of like a high score thing, but also like a weird physics puzzle game at the same time, and it's so addicting, so fun. I, I love that game a lot, and I've sworn at that game a lot too, so um, if, if you're in the mood for that type of like era of game, I, I'd say give it a shot. I've never been able to wrap my head around the Trials games. I haven't played them too mm. often, and I feel like a big uh, reason for it not working for me is I've only played them on mobile. Um, uh, so there you go. There you go. That's, yeah, that's, that's your problem. <laughs> an issue there. Um, but Switch, I, man. I'm interested in this. All I right. remember the trailer they had uh, at E3 last year, and there's a, it was just like a super fun trailer, so it stuck out to, like I think, uh, Tom Marks and myself, and we're like, we're all in on this game. So, yeah, I'm glad I, I got to play it for a, a little bit and showed some love on the show. Good awesome. job. Have you been playing uh, anything else besides Division? Uh, I'm on. I, I talked about this, I think, on the pre or post show a couple of weeks ago uh, on another Zelda Breath of the Wild run through ah. right now um, because it was the two year anniversary recently. So um, I you got start a new file. Yeah, uh, deleted my file and uh, went all the way through deleted again. It. I know, wow. man. Um, <laughs> and so yeah, like the second time I played it, I think a year or two ago like I made a new profile so I could keep my like original file but yeah this one I went all in and uh, I got through all four divine beasts and I'm going through the um, uh, the champions ballad or whatever uh, which is cool because it's the first time I'm naturally playing through the DLC as part of the game wow. rather than oh, going to the DLC later how is that how does I that affect the overall game experience? I think it's a cool experience, and I, I would love to hear from someone who experienced Zelda for the first time with the DLC originally, mm -hmm. um, because that was like one of the first. Uh, that was like the frustrating thing with the uh, Ballad of the Champions, or whatever the fuck it's called. Champions um, Ballad sounds right. Yeah, and so that was the frustrating thing when we all like jumped in that night where they announced like it's coming out now or whatever, and we realized like oh this is like a weird like it's a cool DLC for cool little more story moments. But it's more of just building up to face Ganon, and that we already did that. Yeah, we already did that. So and on top yeah. of that, there was that I I don't remember what part of the DLC it was, but the majority of the gameplay was just kind of like a hide and seek. Where in the world's Carmen San Diego type thing, where it's like you get hints at things and you're like <laughs> yeah, supposed so, to find them. So the uh, the first part of the the challenge, you go back to the the starting area, you grab this weapon, it takes all your hearts out except like one hit, and so that that part I remember a lot but of people it's being one hit kill. Yeah, it's one hit kill, but there's some recharge shine to it. Once you get through that, um, I enjoyed that part. I know a lot of it people was really hated cool. It. It, it, it was very even tied island, um, and then after that part, um, new areas uh, or new things start sprouting up throughout the world, kind of near the uh, the different divine beasts. And yeah, you go to these little temples, and they give you like kind of pins on like an area of the map that you have to like go back to the main map to look at and then go back to that and you're like I think this looks like what you're saying. I thought the implementation yeah. of that was like pretty poor and I, I did not like that stress the DLC but yeah. I can imagine that doing that while playing through the game 
like naturally would be a lot better because you are familiar with the world. Yeah. Having that was months later, like six months later, yeah. jumping back in and trying to like, oh, where the fuck's that? Well, now? Even I'm more because like, I was, don't even know. Because Zelda came out in March and then that DLC dropped to, at the Game, game Awards. Awards so yeah, that was yeah, that was a good nine months. So yeah, it was like going back learning controls and yeah. that was what broke yeah. it for me. It's like oh man, DLC. I remember I jumped in and it was just like. Yeah. Ooh, yeah. how does any of this work again? Oh, yeah. fuck. It's, it's way more fun going into it naturally, like, naturally along with uh, the main part of the game. So I'm, I'm glad I'm kind of experiencing it. If you if anybody out there has uh, played it uh, for the first time with the DLC, I'd love to hear your thoughts. Um, but yeah, does it hold up, though? Like, is it oh. still one of the best games of all time? I was getting shit from Andrea the, uh, the other week for saying that it was one of the best games. She's like, really? I was like, yeah. It's one. Of, it's it the best Zelda game. And if it Zelda- isn't Paragon, she doesn't want to hear about it. Right? <laughs> it's the best Zelda game by a mile. I don't, I don't care about all you nostalgia lovers who love Ocarina of Time. I played that recently, I mean, too. that's the right pick, though. So it's Ocarina like, of Time's you gotta care about fucking, that, right? Ocarina of Time's fucking awesome. The only good way to play it uh, modern day is on 3DS, and I played it recently, and it's still awesome. But Breath of the Wild best Zelda game by a mile, and Zelda is one of the best video game series ever. So yes, this is still one of the greatest games of all time. Um, yeah, that's all I gotta say. Ocarina's better. Yeah. <laughs> it's really not, though. It is, I, it I love Ocarina, but... It does uh, not. There are a lot of things that don't hold up. Um, I mean, neither are Link to the Past, so... No, I'm just fucking with you. I do think oh. Link to the, the Past is better than Ocarina, though. Yeah. Oh, but, yeah. But then we got, we got Breath of the Wild. I'm with yeah. you. I'm with you on that one. Um, anything else, or is that it? Um... I got a code provided by PlayStation uh, last night. Good job. Look at that FTC stuff yeah, he's got. Uh, FTC, uh, Sony yeah, did their me. job. SIE did their job um, for MLB The Show 19. Sure. Have it downloaded. Mm. Haven't played it yet. Okay, but because right. we went to the Giants game, uh, preseason game last night, uh, it was really... It was a lot of baseball happening. <laughs> so much baseball. I'm in, I just got notifications from my fantasy league. I didn't realize you were such a baseball uh, guy. I, I was... Uh, my dad tried to get, raise me through all of sports, and the one thing that stuck was baseball. Because, nice. uh, like, I, like, I get into football every once in a while, um, and then basketball, which is something... Like, that, that's a game that I like to play. Rather sure. than watch, so uh, but yeah, baseball stuck with me. I was. Could raised you beat Andy Cortez one on one in basketball? Yeah, probably not. God, no. why can't you just say yes? You know, <laughs> put him in the ground. I gotta respect him now because he beat me in tennis once. Um, but uh, he embarrassed you in Mario Tennis. He didn't beat you. He embarrassed you. <laughs> it was you. the internet lag, my dude. Uh-huh. Um, uh-huh. IGN's got bad internet. Didn't yeah, that, so. I, I was on the come up. Uh, like I was born in ninety five. Mario Tennis. Yep. Yep. <laughs> Do you think we're actually playing real life tennis? I had him. Well, we were talking about real life basketball. It's <laughs> fair. That's fair. Um, but yeah, I, I was born in the mid '90s, so like I was coming around when uh, the the tri- the Cleveland Indians, which I'm from Cleveland, was kind of having a like they're they're on the up and up. They uh, went to the World Series one year, then lost. Uh, but yeah, I was raised with like Omar Vizquel and like all these uh, these great players. So yeah, I've been loving baseball ever since. Tim, I forget uh, what position did Omar play. Omar? Yeah. Oh my God. He was definitely the shortstop. Gotcha. 100%. Nailed it. Right? Nailed it. Fucking nailed it. I'm so proud of him. <laughs> Wait, did I? Yeah, you nailed it. Omar Vizquel was the shortstop. Good job. He was the reason there why I wanted to be there shortstop. And I was the shortstop was my position when what I What is a shortstop? I don't know. It's a play, it's he's a player, not an outfielder. It's a, I know that. Yeah, he's closer. He's closer than that. Oh, okay. Okay. Yeah, I guess that would make sense. It's the position Just in between second and third base. Mm, uh, for mm. those of you who don't know. Between out second there. and third base, one of my favorite positions, if you know what I mean. <laughs> That's a good one. That's a good one. Tell jobs. But anyway, oh. all right, I've got it downloaded. Um, I might report back on thoughts next week. <laughs> I might. <laughs> good, yeah. good, good. And now, uh, to close out the show, close I want to talk out. about Division 2. The Division 2. <laughs> what do you want to know? So you, you, you're both playing. Yeah. You're just fucking addicted. Right. Yeah. How addicted are you, Barrett? Um, I mean, I was pretty into it. I was pretty into the weeds uh, last week, and it reminded me of when Destiny 2 uh, first launched as mm, well, where it was mm, the first mm. time in my relationship with Alyssa where she was like, you can't play tonight. We yeah, need yeah, to spend yeah. time together. Yeah, yeah. And I was like, fuck, you're right. No, um, you're right. Yeah. Jen yeah, does yeah. that. Jen, Jen, yeah. That's the same thing. I've had that conversation. <laughs> like, it's, cool. We, you could play another nine hours or we could or go we anywhere can and out. do anything. Yeah. <laughs> like, no, you're right. Sorry. Sorry. Yeah. And so, yeah, this, uh, the launch of this game reminded me a lot of that. I'm getting super addicted. Uh, Again, just because I, I haven't played the last couple of days, just because of different life, life stuff and being yeah yeah yeah. You have to so, but um yeah, I'm level twenty eight, um almost close to thirty. Yeah, still got to do all three of those uh, strongholds. strongholds. Yeah, uh, still need a team to to do that with. Kev, what uh what level are you at? Twenty five still. 
No, we gotta get you I up there. You're I close, man. You're close to 26, and then yeah. we can do them. You all fell off, man. Meanwhile, Fran, of course. God. Every morning, every, no, I should say every morning in quotes. Every uh, 11 a.m. usually, I get a text from Fran that's some a variation of a SpongeBob gif with uh, bloodshot eyes. Yeah. Because Fran will play nonstop all the way. What level is he? He's world tier four. He's he's the highest so tier score he can be. World is. tier four. So that uh, that's when it turns. I'm kind 28. Of, I'm world tier four. Yeah. Great. Yeah. Uh, so it, when you get to 30, yeah. Timothy. Yes. Right. Uh, you you're running these strongholds out there that are like bigger missions, right? That are really cool, really great set pieces, like so incredibly done in terms of piecing it all together. To sort of like you know. You're going out on these missions generally, and like you have your side missions, you have random events that are happening in the world, like control points. So I guess in terms of the hierarchy, to try to bring you up to speed, sorry, mm -hmm. let me dial back. You have random events, like here, they're holding a hostage over here, and you have to run and intervene there. Or this is a control point where you have to try to take control back of this area, right? Then there's side missions that are like, okay, you're going to the building, you're doing this thing, whatever. Then there are main missions, which are like major story built beats, right? And now there are these strongholds, which are main, like, a couple different main missions pieced together to make one giant thing. And so like the one that really want well, I think the first one I did maybe was Roosevelt Island with frame. Uh, I don't think that's true actually, but it doesn't matter. This is the one where I really understood the scope of it, where we came in all down, you know, you, we have to walk in off the bridge and the bridge is blown up. So we came off and we crossed the water. We got over there. We started fighting in and we're doing all these different fight things. And we, you know, like 30, 45 minutes later, we're almost to the end and we're on the, we blew up these ships on the uh, shore and Fran's like, yeah, now if you look over to the left, you see the bridge all the way back there. And you got to look and you're like, oh, fuck. Like, we've come in and done all of that as we That's weaved cool. our way. Really like, cool. And like the objective keeps changing of what you need to do in this area and stuff to get to the thing to finish the boss, to finish the stronghold. You get to level 30, which is cap or whatever, right? And it starts building you to 31. When you get there, and but mainly when you finish the strongholds, you unlock specializations, which is what they've talked a lot about, right? Whether you're going to be a grenade launcher, a crossbow dude, or a sniper, mm -hmm. and it's another special weapon now for you or whatever. This cool. is also when what we talked about before is that Black Tusk invades, right, Tim? Mm -hmm. And so these are like the special operatives that are using the same kind of tech you are, like the, you know you're using like super high tech, like mm -hmm. drones and shit. They're using that too. You remember those? You know that every time the Boston robotics people put out like, yeah, yeah, yeah. they're using those fucking things that are going to kill us one day. Oh. They got yeah. those motherfuckers walking around. Yeah, These guys invade doors. the world when you get your specialization. They take over the strongholds and they take over the main missions that you've already done. So now as you start doing this world tier stuff, the idea is that you're you, you start on world tier one and you ha you have to do these two, maybe three in the first one, but two or three st main missions that are the same areas. But now it's Black Tusk rather than the people you're fighting before. So it's different. It, mm. Like your objectives are different. You're not doing the exact same thing. So you it's like Spider-Man where you're not fighting these, the Kingpins gang. Now you're fighting these guys and they have jetpacks. Now, kind of, but no, because the, this is you've already done that as well in this game mm. where it's like, oh, the true sons are taking over this part of the thing, but the outcasts own this part of the city. So you're fighting different factions. These guys are like the Supreme dudes. They've come in they're there to kick the shit out of you and everybody else. So you go through, you do the ma the two main sort missions again, right? Which then open up the stronghold. You beat the stronghold, and then that propels you to the next world tier. Mm. So you keep doing this at, in this thing to go through and do all the main missions, get all the stronghold to get up to world tier four, which then w has a gear. All of this has gear score attached to it. Gear score being what's gating you now between getting into these things. You run the main missions, you get better drops, you equip them, your gear score goes up. Kind of turning into Destiny uh, power level type of stuff. Exactly, one hundred percent what it is. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But in terms of just the easiest explanation, which I know still wasn't easy, but yeah. Right. So yeah. yeah. So <laughs> Fran right now is at the highest world tier. Currently, nice. when I get home tonight, I'm going to probably order some wings mm -hmm. and then immediately do the final or the stronghold to kick me to world tier three. And okay. then the, the race will be on of how much I can get done tonight to see if I can push myself to world tier four before I climb in the plane, even though I am bringing the PlayStation with me to Chicago and Kansas City. Of Jesus. course. You are. Yeah, of course. Yeah, well, come on, man. Something's got to be. And then you hit the, guess the highest, what, motherfuckers. What? Jen, not here next week. So, you uh, know, oh, I'm coming damn. in here fucking gassed and dead every day because well, I was I was actually doing that thing of like, man, well, Fran, I was talking to Fran. I'm like, so is it like. Are you still enjoying it? Because like you hit the, he's like, oh yeah, I'm still going to. I'm like, okay. And then it was that thing of like, oh duh. Even once I get there, I mean, there's plenty of shit for me to do and unlock and stuff. But, but now you can do it all over again with us, man. Well, hundred percent. But also platinum. I got to be working on my platinum. I got a whole bunch of different objectives to get out there and do it. So I, yeah, yeah, I'm, I'm stoked. But that is my big thing. Is like, right now, what drives me crazy is that. Because yeah, work or you know tr travel, pr hanging out with the wife. Life. I haven't had the. I ha I'm not world tier four. As soon as I get to world tier four, I'm like, 
oh, okay, cool. Then Breather. it's going to be, I'll fuck around with everybody. I'll go yeah. do whatever anybody needs me to go do. But right now it is that thing of like, I'm just, clan, just gotta get there. I get in there, I post the clan message of like, all right, anybody want to run this thing? I got to go out and do this thing. And then, you know, they come in and we all fucking power around and do gotcha. it. Hell yeah, gotcha. Yeah. But it's right. so good. It is so good. Like I'm, Good for so them, man. I'm with proud that game. of them. Ubisoft. I this won't be surprised game. if uh, this is in the, my top 10 list of game, uh, games. Oh, I'll year. be shocked yeah. if this is in my top 10 yeah. list or in pretty, yeah, I mean, definitely top five, I think, unless yeah. some really crazy shit happens. Like, yeah, crazy but it's, shit it is that thing fall. of like, I, I, you know, when I platinum Destiny, that was definitely a thing of like, all right, cool, and I'm done, yeah. and it's down. Whereas this one, I really do feel like I'm going to hit World Tier 4, I'm going to platinum it, but then it's going to be like, I still, I, these, I still these projects hanging around. Yeah, yeah. and I want to go help people out, and I want to go do this. Yeah. And yeah, there's so much different goofy shit to do. Not to mention, like, since the last time we did this, right, I had the old school sleepover with Austin Creed and Scott Lowe, mm-hmm. where they came over, and we all just played in the living room. What, what are you shaking your head at, boss baby? We had to go see us. That's on you. You wanted to go see the movie without me. Yeah. Uh, you, know, you guys, book, I think you really invited. I know, but I went on Saturday. Uh, <laughs> but like, it was like, oh my god! It's like that's my thing of going back to Chicago uh, this week, right? It's like I'm, uh, they, I think they've finally passed the leveling, scaling, or oh, really? jumping, okay. and so it's like totally like I know Poe's level one. And I'm like, yep, I'm just going to bring this, the game screen I have and the thing over there and sit in this house right. and after my mom goes to bed and be like, I let's just it. fucking play for five hours. Mom goes to bed. Mom goes yeah, yeah, to bed. Right. <laughs> oh, that's That's what going home awesome. does to you. Love it. Ladies and gentlemen, this has been Kind of Funny Gamescast. Thank you very much for joining us. Uh, we will see you tomorrow for our Twitch shows. You know, twitch.tv <laughs> slash Kind of Funny Games. I'm not going to get cute with that. I'm not even trying to guess what they're watching. Time's weird. Time. Times they are a change. Till next time. Shout out to Bob. Post show time, baby.